This is the narrowleaf plantain. It's a common weed that you probably have growing in your lawn right now, but there's something very uncommon about this plant. It's the host plant for a very special organism, and these are its eggs. When the eggs hatch, minute caterpillars emerge, and they begin to eat the plant. They chew, and they chew, and they chew, and eventually they grow very, very large. And one day, they undergo an amazing transformation. They cross the border from one form into another, from a chrysalis into a butterfly. The transformation is so complete that if you cut open a chrysalis just one day after it's formed, you won't find a caterpillar inside growing wings. You'll just find a bunch of goo. Now, over time, this goo reorganizes and reforms and into a completely new shape, a butterfly. People equate a butterfly's transformation with a rebirth. But recent research shows that the memories that caterpillars form are actually carried on with them into the butterfly stage. That the butterfly is essentially the same person that the caterpillar was. This is the Taylor's checker spot butterfly. It's an endangered butterfly that was once very common on prairies and is now only found in a few isolated patches in the wild. There's a captive rearing program to establish more of these butterflies, and scientists at the Oregon Zoo and the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife have partnered with a unique set of collaborators to raise more butterflies, inmates at Mission Creek Correction Center for Women. We are in the third year of raising these butterflies with inmate technicians, and they have done a phenomenal job. They are meticulous record keepers, they're thorough and careful caregivers, and they help shepherd these organisms through their butterfly transformations. This picture was taken by an inmate, and it shows that the butterflies will actually lay their eggs on another endangered species, the golden paintbrush. This was groundbreaking research that was done in collaboration with inmate technicians in a prison. And this is just one of the ways in which inmates can help contribute to something larger than themselves. They're helping scientists answer key questions in biology and conservation. They're raising endangered organisms to be released into the wild onto healthy landscapes. In terms of this butterfly, having an in-prison facility has effectively doubled the numbers of butterflies that can be released every year into the wild. The butterfly program is just part of a broader picture of restoring prairie landscapes in the state of Washington. We've partnered with prisons to raise not only the butterflies, but a whole host of rare and endangered prairie plants to restore the prairies themselves. We have three conservation nurseries running in prisons in the state of Washington, and combined have raised over one million plants of over 60 different species. This work is phenomenal in terms of allowing our um, restoration partners to do more. Basically, it allows prairie managers to transform 10 times more prairie than they would have before. This work is completely voluntary. Um, the inmates that are involved in our programs um, volunteer for these positions, and they're very highly sought after jobs. Once again, in our conservation nurseries, incarcerated people have an opportunity to participate in a transformation. They plant thousands of seeds. Seeds store the entire genetic code of a plant species. The secrets to their form and function are locked away behind that seed coat that you see there. It's eerily reminiscent of something else. Persisting, sometimes for years, buried beneath the soil, locked away, waiting for just the right moment to emerge, rise up into the sun, and grow to their full potential. Inmates once again care for these plants, they have an opportunity to learn biology and physiology. They're helping us to raise these plants for restoration of the prairies themselves. This work can be extremely rewarding. It falls under an umbrella of uh, horticultural therapy or nature therapy, and for the right person, can provide a meaningful experience, an opportunity to contribute to society and nature, and an open door for internal transformation. Bringing nature and science inside is one of the core principles of the Sustainability in Prisons Project, a partnership between the Washington State Department of Corrections and the Evergreen State College. We've come up with lots of different ways to bring nature inside for both therapeutic 
and educational purposes. Every prison in the state of Washington partners with a community organization to train dogs, transforming problem dogs into service animals and pets. We partner with scientists to raise the endangered Oregon spotted frog, which transforms from eggs to tadpoles to adults that are eventually released into the wild. Each of our sustainability programs involves a whole component of education that we're trying to help our inmate technicians not just do this work, but understand why they're doing it and to provide them with skills that can help them on the outside. So we're trying to reach underserved audiences with science education, providing the people that work with us an opportunity to understand the entire ecological issue from experts and college students. In science lectures, inmates learn about climate change and botany and wildlife. One inmate wrote to us that the odor of a pine bough a scientist brought in for a lecture brought to life something in me that had laid dormant for far too long. So whether inmates are raising butterflies or training dogs or recycling, they have an opportunity to witness transformation and to make a contribution to something larger than themselves. This inmate in our composting program wrote to us that I have had much healing and restoration that I can only credit to a mind that has been transformed in much the same way as the composting process. I am actively involved in my own recovery. So together, we are transforming prisons from sterile, punitive environments to environments of growth and change, to environments where inmates can make contributions to society. We all know that, that doing things and volunteering our time makes us feel good about ourselves, increases our self-esteem, and provides meaning to our lives. These are practices that we should be promoting in prisons so that while people are doing time, they're also doing good. I'd like to thank a lot of our partners in this work. The SPP is a highly collaborative program that has lots and lots of people and institutions that, um, that work together to make it happen. And what I'd like to highlight is that through this work, each of us is also being transformed in some way. Now, I think we probably all agree that we wish there were fewer prisons in the United States. What I think I like most about this project is it's helping to transform public perceptions of prisons and public perceptions of what inmates are capable to do with the time they have while they're incarcerated, contributions that they can make to society and endangered species recovery. The SPP model is spreading across the US and to other countries throughout the world, and we're very excited about this work. I co-direct the Sustainability in Prisons Project with Dan Pacholke, and I thank you for your time. <laughs>